Hi, this is Dr. Uh, Jim Anderson. I'm here uh, tonight talking to you about uh, something called the polyol pathway. Now, I was never a real big fan of biochemistry when I was in medical school, but I'm going to delve into it just a little bit tonight. So, what is a polyol pathway? That's spelled P-O-L-Y-O-L, -L, I believe. But it simply means that when you are a diabetic, your sugars are going to break down differently than when you're not a diabetic because your sugar is going to be high. And they break down through a pathway where you end up having a byproduct called sorbitol. S-O-R-B-O-T-O-L, I believe. So sorbitol is a sugar molecule. The problem with sorbitol, and again, if you have normal glucose levels, don't worry about this. But when you start being in that borderline range, and there's a lot of you out there that may have restless legs and you're... Uh, told that you're kind of borderline, okay? Which is a whole nother topic. I'd like to talk about another video, but understand that if you're, you know, diabetic or borderline diabetic, you may have this breaking down of uh, glucose in a different pathway called the polyol pathway, and that creates sorbitol in your body. Sorbitol then gets in your nerves. Here's what happens when sorbitol gets in your nerves. Sorbitol is not very permeable. It's like gum. It gets in there. It's hard for it to get, get out and escape. So what's in it, it's in it, we think it tends to stay there. And it attracts water to the nerve. So it's been known for many decades now that a diabetic nerve is larger. In fact, a diabetic nerve in some studies has been shown to be 40% larger than a non-diabetic. So now imagine carpal tunnel as a simple example. Did you know that if you have diabetes, you're seven times more likely to have carpal tunnel syndrome? I wonder why. Have you figured it out? Well, it's because the tunnel size never got larger, but the nerve definitely did. I mean, if this is the size of the tunnel and you're trying to squeeze the nerve through there, and normally it might just fit just fine, it might glide, it may not be compressed, but boy, if all of a sudden that nerve is 40% larger, there's gonna be compression, there's gonna be squeezing of the nerve. That is why diabetics have, have more likelihood of getting neuropathy, and that is why some of you, and I think it's which nerve tunnels be, are being affected, you have restless legs if you're diabetic or pre-diabetic. So just a little something I want you to know. That's why I think it's really important that, you know, you try not to become diabetic. You control your sugars and, uh, and you know, kind of have a, a low sugar type diet. And we'll talk more about that. You know, like fats are good for nerves. That's a whole other topic. But I just want to explain the polyol pathway to you and explain physically what happens to your nerves when your sugars are high because of the sorbitol. So thank you for watching and hopefully that was useful. If you like this kind of content, uh, pr please press the like button and make some comments if you would. Uh, and I would also ask that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'd love to teach and hopefully you'll learn more about your restless legs from us. Thank you.